Thank you so much, everyone. I was told we need to rush a little bit because I think we are the only thing that stands between these people and their lunch. Uh, but <laughs> I think the topic is very interesting. So please stick around. And again, thank you so much to Nest for, uh, for organizing this. Now, setting up the innovation ecosystem. I mean, when we look at tourism and travel, there are so many stakeholders, right? We have tourists themselves. We have uh, corporations. We have startups. Uh, we have government entities. Um, we have big organizations like UNWTO, right? So, Alessandra, my first question to you is, how, how do you set up this uh, ecosystem? How do you participate in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, setting up this ecosystem and uh, uh, contributing to, 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 it, to its innovation? And what's the role of UNWTO in it? Thank you very much, Antonio. I, I'm afraid I'm going to keep 20 more seconds for me in between lunch and our speech, because I cannot initiate any form of conversation here in Portugal without expressing my feelings about how being here makes me feel in the beginning of the year. Um, gratitude doesn't summarize what I'm feeling in my heart. Thank you very much, Roberto. Thank you, Luis. Thank you to the Secretary of State. Thank you for all of you for being here. Thank you, Portugal, for being Portugal. Uh, because this morning, you just reminded me why I work in tourism. And uh, specifically, I find it incredibly enchanting that Portugal always manages to give the magic. It's like a little golden powder that you spread over things and that you just give the right movement towards. So we are in the beginning of the year talking about New Year resolutions, uh, talking about whatever is coming in this year and the years to come. So we're using innovation in the sense of being a step forward and showing the way. And uh, I feel very inspired and it's just once again reminding me, yes, I will be positive. Where's Gert? Uh, thank you for being my new mentor for 2023, definitely, <laughs> and beyond. And uh, I've also learned one thing, which I think is important, especially for you guys that work in Portugal, never tell a secret to Roberto Antunes, <laughs> because he will make sure it's known by everyone. So thank you, Roberto, for <laughs> Just jo joking. I want to come back to something which is very important, and once again, it's a very Portuguese activity, focusing on words. Words do have a meaning. Ecosystem, what is an ecosystem? We mention it as if it's a very well understood word. And to me, it's part of the 20 words that like aspirin or like sustainability tend to be overused, therefore, we skip the meaning of it. When we're talking biologically about ecosystem, we're talking about putting together non-living and living factors blended in a way where it's, there's a dynamic equilibrium guaranteed for its survival. Seems complex, but in reality, I think it's just a definition of our bodies, the way we work. I mean, everything is a dynamic equilibrium. So the ecosystem is something dynamic, and it's in equilibrium. In tourism, it makes a lot of sense, because often we lose the equilibrium, because we think of co competition, which is natural, I guess. It's like, I want to be better than you, I want to do better than you. And we measure ourselves, mainly in terms of numbers, to say, I want this number to be higher than yours. Not necessarily internationally, also at a national level. Therefore, we skip the vision of the dynamic equilibrium, and we miss out on the collaboration. We take this very seriously as United Nations, because not only we committed in a bigger vision, which is the Agenda 2030, which all of you know, the SDGs, which many of you know, but we also are pledging to create a better world and build a better tomorrow. 
So I think that what we do in New and WTO, we have an innovation department, which is quite large, that uh, thankfully and luckily also collaborates with NEST and with Portugal. And we have a very strong, uh, I would say, uh, relationship also, like I would say, a love relationship as well, because we absolutely adore whatever you do. We uh, nurture startups, we nurture uh, young entrepreneurs. And we do that by creating what we can create, which is a creative competition between them. So we do a lot of startup competitions in various fields because the startup competition allows us to bring everybody to surface and have let them use us as a platform, as a stage to be seen, to be showcased. We also provide them with mentorship. And also, we put them in touch with the big investors, with the people that will potentially make the difference for them. And we also train them to make sure that they are about to uh, ameliorate the way they present themselves and learn from each other. So in that way, that is the ecosystem that we contribute to. And the one thing that I think it, it's, uh, it's really relevant in the way we work with these is that we do so by keeping in mind that the younger generation is really the one that is gonna make that difference. And without them, there's no future of tourism. So we also have a very, very a close eye on youth, providing them with the mentoring and also the, I would say the purpose, since it's uh, the P that I like the most, uh, to look at tourism as a possibility, yeah. to look at tourism as a way to have a future. We have a big job ahead of us. We've lost so much with pandemic, and we lost mainly workforce. Therefore, we lost people. So we should not uh, lose the, the vision that we do have some things that we need to look carefully into. So that ecosystem at the moment I think needs to incorporate even more the attention to the human capital because the human capital is what makes a difference in the most human of all economic sectors, which is tourism. Thank, thank you very much. I, I, I captured the word nurture because I think it reflects a lot of what we need to do with this whole ecosystem, with the young generation, with startups, but also with the tourism industry as a whole. Thank you so much. Itai, uh, I'm very happy to be here with you. One of the reasons I think I explained to you why uh, I, th I think, you know, coming, coming from Google, we've always looked at Israel as a, an example of how not only we here in Portugal, but also the economy as a whole uh, can grow based on innovation, on startups, on internationalization and exports. That's, that's something that is very, very key to us and that we've been trying to use here in Portugal. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Innovate Israel and how do you establish this cooperation, collaboration uh, amongst, among the, the ecosystem? So th first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. I always love coming to Portugal because I have so many good friends here. And uh, I must say that at the beginning, maybe Portuguese people were learning a lot from the Israeli ecosystem. But currently, thanks to these guys, great job, we learn as well from the Portuguese, and really, you're doing a great job. And I, and I think that the, first of all, Innovate Israel, what Innovate Israel is. Innovate Israel is a company, is a consulting firm that helps big corporations with thousands of employees and more to stay relevant in a crazy world mm. when things are changing very fast. I don't know how many here are working for a corporate. Can you please raise your hand? How many people here are working for corporate, for either travel agent, airline, airport, uh, hotel chain? I don't know if your owners know that, but in three to five years, they might struggle or might not be with us, these big companies, these giants, because technology change everything we know, everything. And the only way, the only way to stay relevant is to collaborate with startups. The only way, the most effective way, the best ROI 
collaborate, collaborate with startups. And the main challenge for big corporations in this ecosystem, in order to survive and stay relevant, is the state of mind of the owners and C-level and mid-level management. Because the whole idea of open innovation is the deep understanding of corporate owners, corporate managers, that most of the smartest people are not working for you. It's a matter of statistics. They, don't, they also don't work for Google and not for Facebook and now for Amazon, so now you feel better, right? <laughs> most of the no. smartest people <laughs> always, it's a matter of statistics, work for someone else. Who is this else? Startups, academy, other companies. So the only way to stay relevant in 2023 and years to come is by collaboration with startups. Do it today. You have great platforms. And I must tell you something. I, I invite each and every one here from any corporate to WhatsApp me. It's easy via the website and send me a list of challenges of your corporations. I commit in 24 hours to get back to you with a list of startups. The challenge is not the scouting part, it's the mindset. Once you will be willing to collaborate with startups and work according to their DNA, fast, be available 24-7, you will get, and you cannot imagine the value you will get. That's the only way for you to stay relevant. Thank you so much, Itay. Uh, free consulting services in 24 hours, so don't waste <laughs> it. Israelis love to, you know, in our, in our, in our uh, uh, community, everything is managed by WhatsApp groups. We have a WhatsApp group for hoteliers, for travel agents, for startups, even a WhatsApp group with the tourism uh, ministry. So it's easy. Once I get the challenge, I, sh I just share it. I'm just a bridge. That's all. We'll, we'll make sure to remember that, <laughs> Itay. Thank you. Roberto, once again, as has been said here and, and as was shown in the beginning, great job from Nest so far. It's been a, a, a short but also long ride, I would say, and uh, it will keep going. Um, I mean, looking at where the future is going, uh, how do you foresee managing the ecosystem? What will change? What areas need to be reinforced? Because, I mean, obviously, a lot has been done, but there's still a lot to do. So how do you see the future going? All right. Well, first of all, let me just uh, tell you that I'm, I'm very proud to be together with these monsters of innovation and so <laughs> bright people that I adore and follow, uh, either on social media or live. I have the pleasure to be in, uh, in events together with, uh, with them several times. So it was a big pleasure to... To, 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 you know, to, to accept the challenge of, of making part of this panel. Well, I guess, you know, um, I think people, is, it was already mentioned, is actually at the core of any transformation. Of course, you have to have um, the tools and the methodologies, but everything starts with people. So I would say that in, in, in every ecosystem, no matter which one, tourism or any other, what the best thing that we can do is like, you know, we do with our families and our children. We have to teach, we have to train. This is the best preparation for an ecosystem to work its best and to provide um, the skills so that each and one, uh, every one of us becomes more empowered and more skillful for any kind of challenge. If many years ago we kind of could predict what kind of challenge we had around because the economies were much more controlled, the systems were kind of even academia would study how those systems of industry, etc., would work. But look at now, you know, it's 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 not an academic study. It's us uh, being really with you know wide uh, eyes looking at how things work in each and every day. So empowering people is definitely what what we need in the ecosystems. So capacitation goes through you know, from the, the, the very simple things and light up approaches up to the very deepest, you know, sitting and doing courses. But I think what, uh, what I see 
us doing here in Portugal is really great, you know, from webinars to very light approaches, but that they can disseminate very quickly the things like, you know, what does metaverse comes as an opportunity for tourism? So what if the entire ecosystem has a grip and understanding, you know, of those principles right from the start of, you know, once this technology comes in and appears and what if we make it, you know, really quick? the apprehension of, of the possibilities. How about as well then providing the tools for trying, test, understand with the successes and failures. That's another thing important for ecosystems. I think sometimes we are too much stuck. And culturally, let's also face it, we are a bit averse uh, of risk as Portuguese, you know, as, as Latin cultures actually. And uh, normally you have to have this maverick, someone who has the guts, goes first time, gets the risk on his, 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 his uh, back, and if he succeeds, then every one of us will go in after this, this, uh, this person who had the guts. So we have as well to put in these ecosystems the opportunities as well for trying, failing, um, experimenting. Uh, and each time, as time goes by, become more skilled to uh, face the risk because the risk brings as well lots of opportunities on answering to big challenges and they're coming often you heard the uh, gerd you know how vuca the world is so for me these are the things and then finally the um, collaboration aspect and you might uh, realize here that i'm not talking about technical skills most of the things that i believe that make an ecosystem work are not technical because those are the things that we can spend a couple of hours, a couple of days studying, and that's fine. Right. But making people actually believe that if I work with someone else, if I share my data, we also heard how difficult it was, you know, uh, uh, Jeff was telling here that, you know, for the reluctancy of some airlines to show, you know, to, to, to exchange your data, so if we think that, you know, collaboration is actually a way of me prov provising um, the gaps that I own in terms of knowledge, of, of capabilities, and if I exchange and provide mine to the other ones who also are, need them, we can both sum and become more than one plus one. And so it's the aspect on extracting the value of, of, um, of the ecosystems that comes from really believing on collaboration, exchanging data, doing partnerships, doing things together, co-creating, analyzing insights, and answering to the most uh, you know, present or future needs of, uh, of the tourists. I think those are the big, uh, big unlocks. And uh, I, I really connect to what you were saying about empowering the ecosystem, yeah. because even you know, we at Google, as you know, we obviously have a set of partners that we work more closely with, but one thing we say internally is respect the opportunity. And the opportunity that we see is, you know, apart from our core work on our day-to-day, -day, there's, uh, there, there's kind of a mission to empower the ecosystem, specifically the travel ecosystem for me, which is the one I, I work with the most. And that's why we work with organizations like Nest. That's why, uh, you know, we work not only with our day-to-day -day partners, but with the ecosystem as a whole. So I think that's really, really, really important. Um, Alessandra, uh, as a global organization, you obviously have uh, a nice view on what's going on uh, around the world. What would you say are the main challenges that companies specifically in the, uh, in the travel sector are, are, are bringing to you? Is it operation development, new customers, skills? Definitely skills. At the moment is, I think, the biggest challenge that we have to overcome together. Bear in mind, I'm going to repeat this forever. Togetherness is the only way to go. Call it collaboration, call it cooperation, call it co-creation. The togetherness is what is going to make the difference. There's not one angle of looking at the story. You have to approach it at a 360. Skills, people. Without people, you're not going to progress, just going to remain where you are. Now, um, 
I was very reassured this morning, I have to say. I mean, if the goal, the overall goal of this was to start positive, I feel very positive. Why? I feel relieved. Thank you for bringing Gerd Bernard in the beginning, because I think what everyone feels is that, oh my God, I mean, am I a techie? Do I have to dress with funky sneakers and a cap backwards and surf uh, in my spare time to be like really understanding about innovation? Do I, look, I'm 55, I have a travel agency, belongs to my family, how do I actually deal with the new challenges? Am I, is everything going to be transformed? Am I gonna disappear because it's all done via the giant OTAs or even more the self determination and choice, uh, given all the opportunities that we have on the web. Are startups going to change my life forever? So, no. As Itai was mentioning, uh, first of all, startups are made of people, for people. So there's always, it, it's always like an easier solution to a potential problem or to a problem that already exists. So. I guess that we need to be a little bit more embracing, but in order to do that, we need to make sure that everyone that works with you is actually understanding that these things are not a challenge, yet an opportunity. So one huge recommendation would be hire younger people. The younger, the better. They're not specifically interested in tourism, make them interested in tourism. We've spoken about this many times. What are the biggest challenges? How much are we gonna pay them? Are they gonna come back to tourism? Tourism is sacrifice. Tourism is, you know, you have to be, no, why should it be sacrifice? Tourism is actually incredibly pleasant. And you don't have to be a super techie. The human factor is very much there, but we need to find ways to make sure that younger people are part of the discourse at the earlier age possible. We're naturally welcome, welcoming to foreigners. Who better than children are actually accepting anybody? They don't care about the color of skin. They even overcome the language barrier very soon. They don't need anything particularly dynamic. So what I'm saying is the solution is skills. The solution is also starting to think at a broader level how we can influence the newest generations to make sure that in 10 years' time, we don't need to make a huge effort because they're already pre-prepared. And believe me, they're more prepared than us. They're stricter than us. A challenge, who of you as children under the age of 18, can you please raise your hands? Amazing, includes six months, huh? So it's fine. Okay, they are already much better than us. They are not going to travel, for example, or they, when they think of travel, they're not, they're not going to travel if the destination is not clearly spelling out sustainable choices. So put this in your mind. If we're targeting people that in 10 years' time, even less, are going to be able to purchase their own travel, you, destination, you, travel uh, solution finder, are talking to people that are not going to go, they're not going to move, if you're not gonna prove that you are carbon neutral or going towards carbon neutrality, having an impact, you're being sustainable, not only environmentally, you're including the communities as part of your discourse. So this has to be done now. As it was mentioned earlier, and I hate to quote him so much, but he literally changed my way of thinking this morning, if we want to be in the future, we have to be before our customers come. So we need to get going. Tourism is about what we're doing in 2025, 2027. So we have to be ready for that. In a way that's reassuring. And the other thing is, there's a lot of talk about the fluidity of the generation. They call it Gen X, Gen X, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to put letters to it, but I see them, I talk to them and they are, definitely much more ready than we are to collaborate. They're incredibly less competitive than we are. So I think that in this transition moment, we should tap onto our children or the children of our friends, if we don't have children of our own, to see how they are, 
and try to be a little bit more of them. I think this should be like a daily exercise. Because if it is true that we have five challenges in the pyramid that are to us, then we have to be confident that that time that we take for ourselves, for our awareness, for our consciousness, is well spent. Because it is true that it's not reality that chain creates the point of view, it's the point of view that creates our reality. So let's be confident and let's do it. Thank you. Itai, uh, startups are a bigger and bigger part of this ecosystem. Where are they thriving? Startups currently, uh, I, I want to give you an example of a startup, startup cooperation, because I don't want to, to, to leave our discussion as uh, like in 10,000 miles uh, <laughs> uh, feet is, on the... On is that how I made you feel? No, 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 no. I, I'm Good. talking about myself only, about myself. <laughs> I, I want to be super practical because I love people getting out of this uh, conference and collaborate with startups and work with startups and hire people that used to work for one minute in a startup because it changed the DNA. So startups, I want to tell you two stories about the, the, the really the value of startups working with corporation. Like six months ago, I read an article in Isra in Israeli uh, financial uh, newspaper telling about an airline in Israel, Israel, you can check it later on Google that the story is true. Israel has released their quarterly uh, uh, financials. financial uh, yeah, financials. And they shared with the shareholders the fact that thanks to collaboration with a startup, their revenues increased, their profits jumped, their ARPU grew in tens of uh, percent, tens, uh, percent, more than 10% significant and this this is just one example of uh, of of the value that the big corporate can get off, out of implementing a new technology um, sa same with the startup uh, provo uh, provo uh, that uh, that portugal venture invested in already make money for travel agency here in Portugal. I'm not allowed to mention the name of the, of the travel agency because I talked to the owner and the, uh, the entrepreneur, he, he, but it's, it's not possible. But, but Google, Google Israel and Quick Lizard. Quick Lizard is the name of the startup. They help the airline increase the revenues by real-time uh, repricing and uh, personalized pricing. Uh, and, and again, this is something that you, of course, you can hire 100 people to, to, to update the pricing every day and look at the competition. But no, if you have a machine that can make it for you and you can increase the revenue, increase the profit, why not? And there are so many areas, but these giants, these startupists, they ha there is a magic. They work according to challenges. If you will share your challenges with the entrepreneurs, the magic will happen. They will come to you with solutions and you will be amazed. The only thing is to make yourself open for new ideas because in many cases we see something new and we tend to look for excuses why not to do it. That's the nature of people. It's not gonna work, we don't have time, we have other, other things to do now, it's not on my agenda for the next quarter. There are tons of excuses. Try one time to do the opposite. In 2023, when you find something new, do the opposite. Try to think why yes, why it's gonna work. And trust me, and I tell that from my experience with my clients, big corporations, those employees that will try and push new collaborations and new initiatives with startups will be promoted, will be the people that the owners would give them a th a, an extra salary, an extra bonus. They will be promoted. These are the people corporations need to promote. Zero ego, not people with NIH, people with the fear of missing out. That's the whole thing. 
And it all depends on the level of understanding of the top management. If they will understand the reason, why is it that important? That's why education is super important because pe people need to be learn about things they don't know. But once they learn it, they execute like you are doing amazing job and really execute the right things to do. And in this way, those corporations will be here for years to come. Great. Uh, Roberto, to close this off, uh, do you think that in any way the, close, the, the gap between these startups and big corporations is closing? And if not, what can these corporations learn uh, from where the startups are thriving, in your opinion? I, I, think, I think so, because uh, uh, you know, as time goes by, we see not only the success on economies on which they put more on the play of the, of the new economy, which is pretty much what startups bring, you know, this agility, how fast they are on delivering, I guess, insights, how resilient and agile they are in times of crisis. And so economies do, do want more and more of this. And you can actually see the efforts, you heard it before from Krista um, and a couple of, <coughs> sorry, the panelists, <coughs> about the efforts on the whole European Union in order to incentivize that more of this kind of nature of business to come in because it's, uh, it's, it's growing faster, it's more responsive. Um, in a way, it's actually more attractive to the new generation. And so it's kind of a win-win uh, win -win situation. I think the gap is closing. I think there is more. But I, I, I hope as well that as time goes by, there's more of a business acumen. I think it's, it's true, you know, getting people connected, it's true. But to me, business acumen, which is meaning how you, you, you totally understand how your business works. And if you do understand, you also think that for the challenges you are facing today, you will not be able to collect all your full res re uh, responses and all your skills only yes. with your competences that are in-house you will have this clarity exactly. that in order for you to provide the best answers for you to become competitive, that you will have to go to the brilliant people that work in other places. And you have to be, have this intelligence of being able to run your business in a way that you go and grab intelligence and capable people and connections and partnerships to make your business thrive. I think it's very difficult for business to have success if you think that you have to have all your competences within, that you have to have a transformation director, a digital marketing director, um, new business director, develop of new products. You can't do that. That will not work. And those people will become frustrated because next week there's going to be a shift on rules, etc. And you have to redimension the whole structure. So the game is go and jump into this ecosystem be bright, have business acumen. How do I run a business in an intelligent way, getting the brilliance of the people that I have around, spending the less money as possible? Of course, we all aim to, 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 to run our businesses by profits and deliver to the, to the propositions that Gerd was saying, have an impact on people. So if you kind of concoct this, uh, this equation, make a brilliant use of ecosystems, work with startups, train your people, I think we will even reduce the gap. But I think the business acumen, which is intelligence on how to run the businesses, is one of the key things to get the, the, the gap closed. So, key takeaways. Nurture the ecosystem, uh, nurture startups, uh, hire the right skills, but collaborate, especially with startups, as you probably won't be able to hire or to form all the skills that you need. And last but not least, send a WhatsApp to Itai with your challenges. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Alessandro.